In this video I will show you how to build this system. We will have a Python script that is going to be constantly listening to audio. It will convert this audio into text and then we will send this text to a locally running AI model. We will run DeepSeek Coder AI on our machine using Olama. I will show you how to set up everything and how we can send requests from a Python script to a locally running large language model. This is an idea of a portfolio project you can work on. It's the beginning of something. You can even integrate this in a bigger project that you have been working on. You could also use Spring Boot service running in the background that maybe saves this audio in a SQL DB. Um, just to give you some ideas. But we will be focusing on this part and I think this could be a nice tool that you can be running in the background when you're watching let's say a YouTube video or even during an interview if you wanted really. Even though I don't suggest doing that. Anyway, let's jump right into building this project. Let's start by looking at this diagram. This shows the flow of our system of what we're trying to build. Basically, we have a Python script that is going to convert speech into text and it will be constantly listening to, to speech. Once we have the text, we will send this to our large language model, which will be running locally on Olama. Olama is basically a tool that allows to run LLMs on your local machine. In this case, we will be running DeepSeek Coder which is a AI model made specifically to solve software related questions and that's our focus. Once we have the response, we will send this back to the user and you can read it out or do whatever you need to do. We repeat the same again, uh, we'll get more speech, this will be converted and the response will be generated. So this is our flow. So let's start by building the brain of our software, which is going to be this script. Just open a Python file wherever you want. I have installed PyCharm Community Edition and I've just created a new empty file. As you can see, I created a project. You can do as well, uh, but this is the file where we are going to work. So we need a couple of libraries. The first one is speech recognition. And the second one is Olama. We will need this to interact with our local instance of Olama. Next thing we want to do is build a recognizer using this speech recognition library. So we also want to get the microphones. We're going to do mix equal to sr.microphone dot list microphone names and let's print these names i'm just going to print the first five uh, it's up to you actually i will change this to first four uh, but this is up to you uh, i've got multiple microphones supported by my machines uh, i just want to print some of them so we now want to also set the microphone you want to use i already know that the number two is the microphone i want my script to listen from so i'm already going to set the device index to two but what you can do is you can actually just run this portion uh, if you just run it you will see a list of microphones and then you can choose which one to use uh, one thing i noticed is that the microphone names gets repeated and most of the times the second one is the actual audio interface that allows us to listen to the audio so in this case you can see i've selected this device index up here device number two and it's two because this is this starts from zero zero one and two so let's go back to our logic next thing we want is to do a try and in this try we want to have a for loop because i've already written this code uh, it has already auto compiled for me i will go ahead and press enter and we'll go through the code together and let me just also add the exceptions down here. So as you can see, it's not that much of a code, but this is what we want to do. So we're going to use the microphone and we want to define the index. So we have defined the index up here and we're going to use that variable. 
and then I'm going to print. This is mainly for us to see what's going on in the background. We want to also adjust for ambient noise. So this is up to you how much you want to adjust the sensitivity. You can do some more research on what works for you. You can do some testing even on your local machine. And then we're going to have a while loop. In this loop is where we're going to do the actual speech to text recognition. And we're going to call Olama. You want to use the recognizer and we want to use this to listen. So we will be listening. And as you can see, we've got two variables, timeout and phrase time limit. Timeout means that if we don't have anything for five seconds, uh, we will stop listening and then we'll come back into this loop. This phrase time limit means that it will listen a chunks of speech for 10 seconds and then it will stop and process the, the audio. This is what's going on in this line of code. Once we've got the audio, we want to process this and transform it into text. To do that, we're going to use our recognizer and we're going to convert the speech into text. So I think this is a Google library. We will be using this one. Once this is converted into text, we want to print it. And then we want to send this text to Olama. So we're going to use this function in the Olama library called chat. You want to define the model. In this case, we are going to use DeepSeq Coder and you want to send in the message the role. So in this case, it's a user and the content is going to be our text. The text in this case could be anything, whatever has been converted here. So let's say you are doing an interview or you are listening to a YouTube video or something. You don't understand the concept. You could have this in the background and it will be listening to whatever is being said in the video or by the interviewer. And it will try to generate a response in real time. The only caveat with this is that you have to hope that in those 10 seconds, you actually have some nicely formatted question. You will need to play with this as well, with these two attributes. So anyway, we will send our request to Olama. Uh, I will show you in a bit how to run Olama and download DeepSeq Coder on your local machine. But for now, uh, this is what we are going to do. This is how we will call our LLM and we will get a response back and then we will simply print this response. I've added some exception handling to avoid errors. I think these are quite self-explanatory. So this is all we need. Uh, literally these few lines of code is all you want. We could actually do something else as well. We could give an initial prompt to our AI model. What I mean by that is we could have a variable up here. So what this says is you give some context. Let's say you are asked, you are doing a software engineering interview and you want to tell your large language model to respond with simple one line answers. This is to give some context to your model. We want to send this as the first input to our LLM. Create a a request for Olama and we will send our thread context variable and then we'll print the response. The next thing to do is to install Olama and DeepSeq Coder AI model on our local machine and then we'll see how this works. Let's move on on how to install Olama and run a local model. The prerequisite you need here is to have Homebrew already installed. And then you're going to use brew install olama. I already have this installed, but this is the command you need to run. So as you can see, I've got the version 0.6.2 already installed. And also don't forget to do brew install pi audio. Uh, you will need this to uh, be able to run your software. So make sure to also run brew install pi audio. So once you installed Olama and Pi Audio, we want to run Olama. This is the command that you will use. Let's start. We're going to let this running on this terminal and we're going to be opening a new one. So now you want to pull DeepSeq Coder and the command you're going to be running is Olama pull DeepSeq Coder. This is going to download the smallest 
LLM for deep seek code that I think is the one with 1.6 billion data points. It's quite lightweight and you should be able to run on your machine. So run this command. I have already pulled it, so I'm not gonna run it again. Once the AI model is pulled, you can do Olama list to see what you have downloaded. As you can see, I've got deep seek code there. Now let's run this. So we're going to do Olama run deep seek coder. And this is going to start the local model. So you can actually interact over here. For example, what is Spring Boot? And it's going to uh, give you responses. This is running totally on your local machine. But we want to call this local model from our Python script. So let's go back to our Python script. We have this running. Let's try to run it. Let's see what happens. What is Java? So it has recognized what is Java. What is HTTP? Whatever I'm saying, this is getting picked up. For example, the message was not clear here and it wasn't picked up. What are HTTP idempotent methods? Yeah, I think it's still processing. As you can see, the speech to text is a hit and miss sometimes. DeepSeeker Coder is specialized for software, but our speech recognition, it didn't understand what I was saying in this case. So it got stuck for some reason. Uh, let's see if we can see anything here. We can see the requests we've been getting into our Olama. So if we go back to our Python script, I think it got stuck. Let's restart it. What is HTTP? What is caching? What is MySQL? So as you can see, here is the initial command we sent. So this is the thread context. And you can see that it says, it gives you an answer. So for example, I asked what is HTTP and gave us an answer back. You have some more context. And then I asked what is caching. It gave us another answer, which isn't too bad. But here you can see that our speech to text failed. Couldn't correctly parse MySQL. It he wrote this my sequel something weird these are the limitations of our speech to text library but as you can see it's a good prototype it could be the start of a personal project as well for you to go and improve or integrate in something else if you go back to our terminal we can see the request that came here and you can also ask questions live it is my sequel let's try here in this case we are getting a response back and that's because we asked the question properly you can run a lot of models locally I chose DeepSeek Coder because it's lightweight and specific for software. So we have finished developing our system. We've got our speech to text script running in the background and it will keep listening. Once we get our audio, it gets converted to text. And then this text goes to Olama that is running DeepSeek Coder AI model and the response is given back to the user.